the children of the world Watching every day go by Changes my life, changes your life Keeps us all anticipating This is where it happens In this one building In this one corner Of this great planet Nation meets nation A lot of talking goes on in here but tonight, what you're about to see and hear is not a political, but a musical summit. The General Assembly transformed into a unique concert arena, the gavel giving way to the guitar. For tonight, the universal language is music. And singing that language in perfect harmony, the founder composers of Music for Unity, Apple. The Bee Gees, Rita Kulu, John Denver, Earth, Wind and Fire, Andy Gibbs, Chris Christopher, Olivia Newton-John, Rod Stewart, and our co-host, Henry Fonda, Gilda Ratner, Henry, and Henry Winkler. All here to present the gifted song, the music for UNICEF concert. indeed and to viewers all over America and in more than 70 countries around the world good evening and welcome to a gift of song at the beginning of the International Year of the Child each artist here who you've seen tonight has made a lifetime commitment to the world's children some of them have written one special song for the occasion tonight some of them have chosen one of their most popular previous compositions but all ten brand new or standards will tonight become the property of the children of the world as each of our founder composers turns over the copyright and the future income from the song to music for UNICEF signing as you'll see this particular parchment here as they deed their gifts to the children of the world and now an artist who's lovely in more languages than even the UN translators could manage. She's the one that we want, Miss Olivia Newton-John. There's a 
Establishing a tradition, the first band of composers to turn over their copyright to UNICEF, passing the document of record to Olivia newton John. Olivia, in turn, will pass the pen to our next band of composers. And if you haven't guessed who that might be, it's my pleasure to point out Mr Andy Gibb. Because of the generosity of so many people, like, just to take two examples, Olivia Newton-John and Andy Gibb. Maybe you don't know me any more than I know you And I wouldn't blame you if you walked away I've been watching you in your eyes and it touches me much more than I can say you know I hate to think that someone could have hurt someone like you and if I was them I'd be right by your side lay your troubles on my shoulders Put your worries in my pocket Rest your love on me a while Lay your troubles on my shoulders Put your worries in my pocket Rest your love on me a while Here are Andy Gibb and Olivia Newton-John i 
troubles on my shoulders But your worries in my pocket Rest your love on me, oh I Lay your troubles on my shoulders But your worries in my pocket Rest your love on me, oh I of song, the music for UNICEF concert, brought to you by McDonald's Restaurants. At McDonald's, we do it all for you. And by Polaroid, inventors of instant pictures and now instant movies. Grease, soundtrack. Rumors by Fleetwood Mac and Saturday Night Fever, soundtrack. Yeah, I... I... I, I kind of blew that, didn't I? <laughs> and the winner is... And the winner is... Grease Soundtrack! Thank you, thank you very much. On behalf of uh, Robert Stigwood, Al Corey, uh, the cast of Grease, and a special thanks to my good friend Barry, who wrote an incredible song, Grease. Thank you. This is CBS. Thursday with the 21st Annual Grammy Awards. John Denver is your host for this spectacular two-hour live presentation. Cast an eye and lend an ear to the record and music world's most exciting night of the year. You'll be among the very first to know who the big winners will be. It's two hours of superstars and super music. The 21st Annual Grammy Awards with host John Denver. Thursday at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. You know, some artists have so much talent that they simply take your breath away. Well, if I may be so bold as to suggest, everybody better take a deep breath. Here's a nominee for Best Pop Vocal Performance Female, Olivia Newton-John.
pleasure for me to be here tonight and to present the award for the album of the year. The nominees are the original soundtrack from Greece. The artists are John Travolta, Olivia Newton-John, Frankie Valley, Frankie Avalon, Stockard Channing, Jeff Conaway, Cindy Bullens, Sean Anna, and Louis St. Louis. The producers are Louis St. Louis, John Farrar, Barry Gibb, Albie Galutin, and Carl Richardson. Thank you. Oh, incredible. Uh, They're picking over there in the corner. The winner is Olivia Newton John. Thank you very much. This really is an incredible honor to receive this award, and uh, especially with such fantastic women singers around today. And uh, it's really, my heart's pounding really fast here. I'm really thrilled to accept it, and thank you very much for voting for me and for supporting me over the years. Thank you. Um, may I uh, have the, it's not an envelope, it's the uh, plaque. Uh, the winner is uh, Olivia Newton-John. Are you sure you haven't made a mistake? Like, <laughs> Are you sure you haven't made a mistake? <laughs> to be nominated in the same breath as Sally Field and Jane Fonda is um, honor enough for me, and to, to have ex excuse me, achieved acceptance in my first movie in America is beyond my wildest dreams, and uh, it's probably the most exciting award I've ever won, because it shows that a lot of people believed in me, and I'd like to thank them all very much. Not individually, but thank you all very much. And thank all of you for voting for me. I really appreciate this. Thank you. The winner is Greece. Well, <laughs> as Robin Williams says, it's rather like deja vu, but I think it's fantastic. And, uh, Alan, why don't you say something? Alan Carr, the producer of Grease. Hi. Um, I'd like to introduce some of our Grease girls with Matt Stalker, <laughs> Dodie doing? Goodman, <laughs> Dee Dee Khan without her pink wig. Um, to win this award, having co-produced the biggest grossing musical in the history of the movies and passing a kidney stone all in the same evening <laughs> is, almost, is almost too much, but that's what's happened. And uh, Robert Stigwood, my co-producer, and John Travolta, our dear star, are not here, but we share all this together. And thank you, the American public, for making it not only the biggest hit in America, but the biggest musical ever all over the world. And my girls, <laughs> it's terrific. Oh, Alan, I love you. it. <laughs> thank you. I didn't realize, but you were given the Order of the British Empire in 1979? I think I might have got it through Australia because Australia is part of the British Empire and I think that Australia had put my name up for it because I had done so much for the image of Australia. It was, was probably just around the Greece time and I played an Australian in it. I think that's how it must have happened because I can't imagine what else I'd done. But anyway, it was very nice. We talked to Olivia Newton-John on the day she went to Buckingham Palace. Yeah, O N J O B E. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. How does it feel? That's great. Well, let's have a look at it. Let's let's see it. I've got to show it off. When are you allowed to wear it? Um, I have a card here telling me that I'm allowed to wear it. Hold on. On. I don't know. When gentlemen wear full dress, we should wear it. evening dress with special orders. For I it. see. There it is. It looks very good. What Beautiful, happened? I mean, were you very excited, very nervous? I was very excited. I wasn't really nervous until I, my name was called and I had to walk along a very long corridor. And then he said, he gave us the rigmarole on how many steps to take forward and then you turn and then you curtsy and then you walk forward and then you walk back. And I thought, I'm sure I'm going to forget this and fall over. Or... It was an amazing experience. We, first of all, we stood off in a roped off area in the hall at Buckingham Palace, which was an experience in itself while we were waiting for, I think they had the MBEs in one area and the OBEs in another area and the SIRs in another area and the Dames. And uh, I was quite overwhelmed by this. And just to see the castle itself and the huge paintings of all the kings and queens that had been before. And then when my name was called, and I had to actually walk on a red carpet and go up to the queen. And 
It was, I didn't really believe it was happening. And they had the beef eaters standing behind her with the, holding the swords. And they had a beautiful band playing up in the balcony. And it was amazing. Tremendous. It was. She was wearing pink cashmere and pearls, I remember. <laughs> what were you wearing? I wore, we well, had to wear a hat and gloves. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I had a little, very prim and proper, a white suit with a red hat and red gloves and red shoes to match. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I hope you didn't clash with the Queen's Pink. Oh, no, no, no. We mm. had a discussion before. So oh, you chatted sort of just like we <laughs> did today. <laughs> yeah. um, what was that story about you falling about or falling had down? Was it the Queen's bathroom or was it the Royal bathroom? What sort of bathroom was it? Was, it? Well, it was royal because it was in the Buckingham Palace. Um, mm. But yes, I fell down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> I tripped in the loo. <laughs> that was... Um, I was quite pounced on. In fact, two days later, I went to the royal premiere of a film in London, and Princess Margaret was one of the people that we were introduced to in the line. And one of the first things she said to me was, I believe you fell down the stairs in the royal bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia, this is your second Royal Command performance in, the, in, the, in one month, isn't it? Oh, that's fantastic. Congratulations on the first. I imagine you're a bit less nervous tonight than you were then, are you? Um, a little less, but nevertheless, it's exciting, actually. Of course, you were an enormous star in America, an enormous singing star before Greece ever happened. But how much difference has that picture made to your life? It's actually made an awful, awful I shouldn't say awful, a wonderful amount of difference, I think. It was probably the most important thing that ever happened to my career. It sort of broadened it greatly. Um, I, my face is obviously more recognisable because people have seen it on a huge screen now, whereas before it was album covers, and if they'd seen you live, maybe. So the privacy factor is gone, but it's, it's added so many wonderful things. It's terrific. When you say the privacy factor is gone, I mean, are you ever able to, to be alone or to do things that you feel like doing? If you really want to, you can. You know, but, um, I think it's part of the excitement of the, to see what the film has created, especially to go to foreign countries and be spotted. Sandy! <laughs> what, sort of, what sort of offers arose out of Greece, film offers? Uh, a few, quite a few, but not. I haven't found the right one yet. I'm sort of waiting for the right one to come along. Would it have to be a musical? Not necessarily. It really depends on, on the part. You know, um, it took me a long time to find Greece, so, uh, and it's a hard film to follow, as you can imagine, yeah. so I've got to be very careful what the next one is. Hello, thank you very much. Thank nice you. Ladies well, and gentlemen, it's time for the first nominated song tonight. And it is a pleasure, this, for the first time in the history of the Academy Awards, we have with us all of the original performers of the five nominated songs. And to accompany them, a remarkable organization comprised of 100 of the finest studio musicians in Hollywood. This ensemble, founded by Jack Elliott and Alan Ferguson, is known as the Orchestra. And now to sing the first nominated song, hopelessly devoted to you from the movie Grease, the beautiful co-star of the film, Miss Olivia Newton-John. Guess mine is not the first heartbroken. My eyes are not the first to cry. First to know there's just no getting over you. No, I'm just a fool who's willing to sit around and wait for you. Nothing else for me to do I'm hopelessly devoted to you I'm really enjoying myself. This is the first year that I've had time to just do nothing and I've been at home with my animals and is this by cooking choice? dinner. And is this by yes, choice? Is I love it. You just mm. told your people I'm taking some time off. Yes. Must drive them crazy <laughs> because you have never, you have never been hotter than you are right now. It is hit after hit after hit. Well, I've been, I've been, it's been an incredible year and I think when Greece came out, it was such a smash and my whole life really changed around and I really owe such a lot to the film because it opened me up and it opened me up musically to a new market and all kinds of things 
But it was, was getting so frantic, I thought, I've got to take some time to myself and look at what I've done and enjoy it. Because if you keep working all the time, you don't have time to That's enjoy so what you've that is so established. True. Yeah. So and here how much I'm time have you been off? Well, it's been about six months. Now. You had a little bout with the flu not long yeah, ago. Yeah, I, I was a bit sick. Say you. Yeah. And could I take this opportunity to thank everybody who wrote to me and sent me flowers? Because oh, the nice? people were so kind. And any of you out there, I really appreciate your thoughts. When I was in hospital, I got most beautiful letters, and someone sent me a dog this big because I thought I'd be lonely and miss my oh, animals. It was really sweet, and I really appreciate it. That's so I hope you don't mind me no, taking your time. We're about to go into the 80s, and the last 10 years have been a pretty hectic time for you. How do you sort of, first of all, uh, look over your own career over the last 10 years? It's been phenomenal, really exciting, and um, I think more has happened to me in the last four years than before that, but it's right. been a culmination of all the, all the years before. It's been fantastic. If the next 10 years are as good as this one, it'll be great. Then came the 80s and a racy new sound that would give Olivia her biggest hits, solidifying her position as a pop icon. Aussie songbird Olivia Newton-John started her career in the early 70s as a country star. Have you never been that love? By the end of the decade, she had changed her tune. I was just thinking, these are the 80s and times change, and people had to change right along with them. Not that we have to throw away everything from the past, it's just that we have to learn to look at old things in a new way. So, if you have any preconceived ideas about the 80s, or me, you better hold on to your hands. Spectacular Hollywood Nights with Andy Gibbs, Elton John, Tony Tennille, Tina Turner, and a special appearance by Gene Kelly. Olivia Newton-John's Hollywood Nights right before the Oscars.
stars Andy Gibb, Elton John, Clint Richard, special appearances by Karen Carpenter, Peaches, Tony Tenille, Tina Turner, Dick Clark, featuring Ted Knight and Olivia's special guest star, Gene Kelly. Olivia Newton-John, Hollywood Night. We'll get a Hollywood preview of right Olivia, here. Andy Gibb, Cliff Richard, Elton John. Where else but in Hollywood could you find so many British rock stars? How about England? Huh? I wasn't counting England. I figured. Mr. Rock and Roll know it all. <laughs> Here's a little salute to American rock and roll. Buddy Holly. Okay. All of my love, all of my kissing. You don't know what you've been a missing, old boy. Oh boy. When you're with me, oh boy. Oh boy. The world could see that you were meant for me. See my baby in the eyes Oh my love, oh my kissing You don't know what you've been I'm missing, oh boy, oh boy You're with me, oh boy Oh boy, you see that you What's her story anyway? I first met Olivia seven years ago. Let's get I first... the big story from someone who knew her before every Tom, Dick, and Clark jumped on the bandwagon. This is uh, Alfie's Pub, uh, where Olivia used to sing for fish and chips. Hello, 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 Melbourne. I'm very big in Australia. <laughs> you know, Olivia used to sing here with her best girlfriend, Beatrice. She was... Beatrice? Oh, this is her. Can you hear me? Beatrice? What does a kangaroo sound like? I don't know. Ted, I'd like you to meet Rod Stewart. Rod, it's indeed a great pleasure. We don't have time for that right now, Dick. Get lost, what? kid. We're gonna go sing something. Ted, is that your real hair? Come in, somebody. Anybody. Rod Stewart. And there's one thing that I can say about Hollywood. It's easy to meet people here. You can meet Mr. Wright, Mr. Cool. You can meet all kinds in Hollywood. That's right. This is my friend, Tony. You just have to know where to look. <laughs> yes. And this is my friend, Tina. This town offers more than just the movie star types. Mm, you meet men on the move, mm. men on the town. Men on the road, men on the loose. And on the run. Oh. On the up and, and up. On the down <laughs> and out. All right. Somebody's gonna hurt someone. 
Wednesday, the Bradfords find themselves caught in a comedy of errors, which leads to a police vice raid on Eight is Enough. Then Chris tries to smoke out a killer in a women's prison on Charlie's Angels. Sunday, Paul Newman and Robert Redford star as kings of the con in The Sting. We're all over the tube tonight. The winner is Olivia. Oh, thank you. David Shaw and Norman Gimble for It Goes Like It Goes from Norma Ray. Olivia, my best performance. Heck. I have one favorite moment in my career where I went back to Australia to sing for the Queen at the Sydney Opera House. And I sang Don't Cry For Me Argentina with like a 120 piece orchestra oh, live. I didn't know that. You haven't seen that? I've got to show you. It's on oh, tape. you guys show And me. I got such an incredible feeling from it that <gasps> I was really moved because I was really singing about Australia. Well, the fact that it was called Argentina didn't matter, but it was just a great moment. It was in my hometown for the Queen oh, wow. with my family and all. That was a high. That's pretty great. I like... Now, up at my ranch, I have big speakers that play out mm. all over the place. You know what I get caught up on? Okay. And I fix the needle so it goes over again. I love Don't Cry For Me, Argentina. Oh, thank you. That is one of the great things you ever put down on wax. Oh, thank God. I didn't think anyone heard that. <laughs> oh, in fact, you did that long before Evita yes, came to America. I did, because I, I heard the song. Actually, this was a whole story in itself. I was in the middle of an album, or I just finished an album, or I can't remember exact circumstances, and my producer, John Farrah, was in Australia on holiday, and I heard this song, and I thought, I have to do this. It was like... 
I was so in love with this song, I had to do it. So he flew to Canada and we met in Vancouver. And in a day we put it down with like a, I think a hundred piece orchestra in this tiny oh. little studio. I don't know how they got them all in. And I, was, I wanted to release it, I was really excited about it, but unfortunately the original was on the same label and it would have clashed and so I couldn't release it, so it went on an album. Oh, I love that song. Oh, what a beautiful style that is. It was early is... this year, March or so, and we did a command performance for Queen Elizabeth in Australia. And How that was really that exciting. Oh, it was fantastic. You've done that before? Um, yes, I'd done one in, in England about right. four or five years ago. To sing in this beautiful opera house. Now, the last time I sang here, I sang for the Queen in May of 1980. Olympia recently returned to her native Australia to be her Majesty Queen Elizabeth of England at a Royal Command performance at the Sydney Opera House where she sang this beautiful ballad, Don't Cry For Me Argentina, from the Broadway musical of the year, Avita. Here's Olivia. Olivia Newton-John was awarded the OBE last year, an honour in an incredible career which has taken her from Melbourne coffee lounges to the London Palladium and the New York Metropolitan Opera House. Convoy arrives in the concourse of the Sydney Opera House. As the Queen alights from the Royal Limousine, Her Majesty the Queen, His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh, The doors swing open, and now they see her, day in and day out. But Her Majesty will really enjoy tonight, and so should all of us. They were all I desired. It's my pleasure to introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, Olivia Newton-John. Thank you good evening ladies and gentlemen hello Australia I must say how fantastic it is to be back and I'm delighted to have been invited to sing here on this very special occasion and there are a lot of things I would like to say but I think this next song kind of sums up a lot of feelings that I have inside
I can think of to say to you. But all you have to do is look at me to know that every word Thank you. I'll be immediately gone, ladies and gentlemen.